Yeah, yeah, I love David. Break their teeth, Lord. I... Now, <clears throat> let's give our youth a great big round of applause. And I want you to know that tonight you were led into the presence of God by the youth praise group. Come on, church, let's support them, the youth praise group. Amen. Amen. I love the subject of prevailing prayer, and I, I wish I could teach on it forever. I know it seems like it, but I'm telling you there, 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 is, there is so much to realize and understand. And parents, parents, you can help break this bullying thing if you get into prevailing prayer and not stop until it happens. Well, thank you for your enthusiasm. You see, here at church, look at me, please. Here at church, we are to teach what you're teaching at home. It is not right for you to depend on us to teach them. We don't stand a chance. We only get them one or two hours a week. You get them much more hours than we do. Am I on now? Come on guys, work with me. School has them a lot longer than we do. Television has them a lot longer than we do. Instagram, Snapchat, all those things. I'm not fat. Who said you're fat? All those things have them longer than we do. And then you get mad if I preach over an hour. But you don't get mad if they watch TV for more than an hour. And you don't get mad if they play that, all those games for more than an hour. No. But God forbid the preacher preach long. I'm serious. I know it sounds funny. But I'm serious. We got this thing all wrong. I said, we got this thing all wrong. People tell me, well, you know what? They lose their, their, their attention span in 45 minutes. Oh, yeah? I've watched them watch TV for hours I watch him play play those the, the video games for hours and not lose the attention so I mean how does that work they only lose their attention here how long are the classes in school I, I can't hear I don't know I haven't been in school since World War one <laughs> 45 minutes, one class? I can't hear. 45 to 50 minutes in one class, 45 to minutes. How many classes do they have a day? Nobody complains to them. They're losing their attention span. We got to quit baby dead, and we got to raise them up as men and women of God so they can learn how to fight and they can learn how to battle. Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? Somebody shout prevailing prayer. How many of you have taught your kids how to prevail in prayer? Don't raise your hands because God does not take kindly to lying spirits. Not that all of you would be lying. Just look at the person behind you and say, he doesn't mean you. Tell me, it's not, it doesn't mean you. Huh? How many of you have taught your children how to prevail in prayer? How many of you have ever taught your children how to travail? in prayer it's impossible for one uh, for a group of pastors and a ministry team that has your children twice a week maybe maybe twice I know for sure once but maybe twice a week 
to teach them all of that stuff that you should be teaching them and we should be confirming it from this pulpit. I love prevailing prayer. The prevailing prayer of faith, listen, is the strength of the Christian warrior. Prevailing prayer is the strength of the Christian warrior. Nothing else, hear me, nothing else so enrages Satan and so surely prevails against him as the prevailing prayer of faith. The enemy hates the name of Jesus. He hates the name of Jesus and is always alarmed when we call on Jesus for help against the enemy's plans. He hates that. Intense, say intense. Intense prevailing prayer causes Satan and every demon in hell to tremble and to retreat. Satan has been defeated on every battlefield. Let me try that again. Satan has been defeated on every battlefield. Every battle you're fighting now, Satan has already been defeated. Hallelujah. And the victories of Jesus, listen, the victories of Jesus are promised. Say, God has made me a promise. Say that. Say, Jesus has made me a promise. Say, the Holy Spirit has made me a promise. There are victories, there are victories promised to those who seek in faith. Every child of God should learn to say what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Look at what he says. Thanks be to God. Can somebody shout that out? Which gives us the what? The what? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You may have to prevail for a while, but you have to know that what will keep you prevailing in faith as to know is to know that God has given you the promise of victory. Hallelujah. Pastor Lydia said, at the end of the book, we win. Does that mean we don't have to read the book? No. That encourages you to get in the book even more to find out what God did to give us that victory. Are you hearing what the preacher is saying? Every Christian should be able to quote that scripture. Every Christian should be able to quote 2 Corinthians 2.14. Say now. When? When? Now what? Now thanks be to God who what? Who what? Always. Say always. 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 We don't live like that's true. We don't. We don't live like that's true. Well, you know, I, I, I've got, I'm really, you know, this is really bothering. Don't let it bother you. You have the victory over it. Maybe I ought to say, you need to get in your word also. You need to get into a Bible study. And we have many of them in this church. Look, look. Now thanks be to God who always what? Leads us in triumph in Christ. When does it lead us in triumph? When? Always. When? Always. He leads us in triumph when? Always. Not only when I feel good, but when I don't feel good. Not only when everything looks right, but when everything does not look right. And it doesn't feel right. And nothing's going right. And everything's going crazy. It doesn't matter. Get your eyes on God. Because in the midst of it, He will always lead you in triumph. You will be triumphant. Always triumphant. You may have to prevail and prevail and prevail and prevail. But the fact that you know that you're always victorious is what keeps you prevailing and praying and praying and faith and faith and faith. Why do you do it? Because God said, I always win. Why should I stop? Oh, God, help me. Help me close.
close this subject. In Christ, God leads us from place to place in one continuous, uninterrupted, never-ending, continual, constant victory parade. The victory never ends. The victory never ends. God always leads us in victory. Another word for triumph, in victory. God leads us in victory always. The victory never ends. So how do you personalize that? You say, God, I thank you that I am always in Christ Jesus victorious. See, we need to teach that to our kids, but we got to we got to get in the word ourselves. Our kids don't believe that. Because there's nobody telling them. Except maybe once or twice, a couple of hours a week in church. Sweetheart, I don't care what they say. What does the word of God say about you, sweetheart? God says I'm always victorious, mom. That's right. Now you go, you go out there and stay victorious in the name of Jesus. Isn't that something? Instead of saying, well, I, I, I don't know what the word of God says. Somebody shout prevailing prayer. Amen. Say it again. Amen. So in the light of that, there are some definite characteristics that set prevailing prayer apart from ordinary or common prayer. Prevailing prayer is the prayer that dominates and triumphs over any situation. Now, God tells us in Isaiah 62, 6. Have you got that, please? Look, look at Isaiah 62, 6. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall... Say never. Come on, say never. They shall never hold their, their, their peace day or night. That's prevailing prayer. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You make mention of the Lord. Do not keep silent. Verse 7. And give him no rest till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Give him no rest. Keep, we talked about that last week. That's how we close. Stay in God's face. Stay in his face. And if, it, I may be a, a little crazy, but I just, can, can I say it like I feel, like I said, even if God, for whatever reason, were to turn this way, there you are. Ah, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, Lord, no, no, no. I'm, I'm in your face, and I'm not going to get out of your face till you bless me. And give him no rest. Give him no rest. Look at 1 Kings 17. 1 Kings 17. I, 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 I asked you to have that aside because I forgot to add it. 1 Kings 17. There you go. Thank you. Look at verse 17. Now what happened after these things? That the son of the woman who owned the house became sick. And his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah the prophet, What have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? And he said to her, Give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his own bed. Then he cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodge by killing her son? And he stretched himself out on the child three times. Not once. Three times. Many people that I know would have done it once and if nothing happened, then there will, maybe it's not God's will. 
He stretched on the child three times and cried out to the Lord, prevail. He was prevailing and cried out to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. Then the Lord heard the voice of Elisha and the soul of the child came back to him and he revived. And here's why this is so important. And Elisha took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, see, your son lives. Now here's, here's, the, here's why it's important. Then the woman said to Elijah, now by this I know that you are a man or a woman of God. Because you travailed. You didn't give up the first time. And you didn't give up the second time. And you didn't give up the third time. By this I know that you are a man of God. And that the word of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. Through prayer the dead can be raised. Through prevailing prayer the sick are healed. Through prevailing prayer, the lost are saved. There is no limit to the miracles that God can perform when his people learn how to prevail. Prevailing prayer, listen, it's where you pull out all of the stops with the Lord in order to get him to release for you a major miracle, a major healing, a major breakthrough, or the situation that you're praying for. There are many times in counseling when people come into these situations, and there are many times that I've been led by the Lord to say to them, listen, now is the time that you exercise everything you've ever learned about the Lord now is the time to exercise and my afterthought is but what if they hardly know anything about the Lord because they're not in their word and they're hardly at church and they're not in a Bible study but now they're in a situation and it's a hard situation it looks almost impossible and here's where you have to exercise from the day you got saved to this day in your life, you must exercise everything you know about the Lord. And the question to you would be, and don't answer out loud, honestly, between you, yourself, and, and God, how much do you know about the Lord? Don't answer. It's just between you and God. Because those situations are going to come in your life. And, and you're going to come to your pastor. And you're going to come to other pastors. And the only answer that God's going to give them now is the time to exercise everything you know about God. But how much do you know about God? He was calling your prayer partner. ain't going to help you now. Thank God for prayer partners. Calling other people ain't going to help you now. Right now, in the midst of that ugly situation, it's you and God. How much do you know about God? Please, look, I love you. Please, he who has an ear, hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So this is without, this is without question the most powerful form of prayer that you can use with the Lord to get him to answer your specific prayer request. So now I will talk to you in the next few minutes that I have left, the conditions of prevailing prayer. In other words, in order for you to prevail in prayer, in your prayer battle, there are several conditions that have to be in place. Number one, number one, you must be fully persuaded when you pray. In other words, you cannot pray, Lord, if this is your will, you are not fully persuaded. There are certain times where you pray that, but when you're in a battle, you should know the promise and the answers of God. And you must be fully persuaded that God will keep his promise. You must be fully persuaded that God's not going to let you down. You must be fully persuaded that the word of God will come to pass. Condition number one, you must be fully persuaded. In other words, you must have a made up mind. You must be prepared to stand and believe. You must see with the eyes of faith. Your victory must be, listen, this is important. Your victory must be in your heart and your word must match your heart. 
Your victory must be in your heart. That's what pushes you to prevail. But when, you're, when, when you talk to other people, what you say must match what's in your heart. You must be fully persuaded. Say fully persuaded. A made up mind. What does fully persuaded mean? Basically, it's a made up mind. My mind is made up and I'm not going to let go and I'm not going to stop until I see the promise of God manifested over this situation. Now, it could be a week, it could be a month, it could be years. Who cares? What's important is you will see the promise of God come to pass if you know how to prevail. God, please tell me you're beginning to understand the importance of what I've been teaching the past six weeks. A made-up mind means that the issue is settled for you. Oh, I like that. The issue is settled for you. Your mind is made up there. No matter what book you read or no matter what, you hear on the radio from other pastors or other preachers, doesn't matter. Your mind is made up. Fully persuaded. Somebody say, my mind is made up. Come on, say it again. Look at Romans 4.21. Here's what the Apostle Paul said, Romans 4.21, at the bottom of that. It said, and being what? See, most people are almost persuaded. And they're not going to get fully persuaded until they get a confirmation from 10 or 15 people. It should be two or three, but they're going to go after 10 or 15. Amen? But let me tell you, if it's already here, you don't need confirmation. God's already given it to you. God's already given it to you. Look at 421. Look, and being, say, fully persuaded. Come on, somebody shout, fully persuaded. And being fully persuaded of that what? That what God had promised, he was also able to perform. Your mind has to be made up on that because you're travailing in prayer, you're prevailing in prayer, and pushing in prayer, and sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. And if you don't know this, if your mind is not made up, if you are not fully persuaded, that's where you'll quit and say it doesn't work. You were never fully persuaded to begin with if that's all it took to cause you to quit prevailing in prayer. Prevailing means you win. I said prevailing means you win. You prevail over the situation. Are you hearing me? Is God able? Is God able? That's why you can't quit. Quitters never win. Quitters never win. Quitters never win. And winners never quit. Are you a winner or a quitter? Are you a winner or a quitter? Are you a whiner or a quitter? I was trying hard to get you. I was trying real hard to get you. Winners never quit. Quitters never win. Now, th listen, listen to me. Listen. This is a critical step because if you're not fully persuaded that you already have the victory in Christ, Satan will be able to move you out of position. To be able to prevail is to absolutely be certain that you are in the right and that, that God is on your side and that he has already issued a victory for you. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Step number two. Condition number two. Condition number two. You must be prepared to stand and believe. Now that you've been fully persuaded, your mind is made up that the victory is yours, you need to prepare yourself to stand and believe that. Right. Ephesians 6.13, therefore put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand, resist and stand, resist and stand, resist and prevail, resist and prevail, resist and stand your ground, stand your ground ground don't give any ground to the enemy stand your ground 
Turn to your neighbor and say, stand your ground. Stand your ground on the evil day. Listen, it's an evil day when the enemy comes and tells you that what God said is not true. It's an evil day when God comes and tells you it's not true. You're not healed. You're going to die of cancer. It's an evil day. We say, now your kids are never going to straighten up. They're drug addicts. Now they're going to be drug addicts forever. It's an evil day. We need more people to say, no, I know what God said because I'm in my word. I go to church and I'm in Bible study. I know my word and I know what God has promised and I know that God is able. I just read it and my mind is made up. I will not give in. I will stand my ground. Some of you ought to learn how to draw a line in the sand and not, but, but, but don't draw like 10 lines. Okay, that one didn't work. Okay, try again, devil. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, try again, devil. No, you ought to draw one line and say, devil, you're not getting past me. You're not getting to my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, my household, my wife, my kids, my mom, my dad. You will not get to them. I know who I am. I know what God said. I know he is faithful. I know his promises are yes and amen stand my ground stand my ground for my marriage stand my ground for my household stand my ground for my business my finances I stand my ground man I wasn't a Christian to have to learn that out there I learned that out there I learned that if you don't stand your ground they'll gobble you up And when I got saved, God didn't take that out of me. He just cleaned it up, turned it around, aligned it to his word, and taught me how to continue to stand my ground. But instead of in others, I now do it in Christ Jesus. Can I encourage you tonight to stand your ground? Can I encourage you again to stand your ground. Has God ever given you a dream? Has it come past to pass yet? No. Stand your ground. It's already come to pass. It's just a matter of time before it just whoop drops out of the supernatural into the natural. Just a matter of time. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's just a matter of time. Has God ever given you a promise? Have they all come to pass yet? No, stand your ground. It's on its way. It's already been released. It was released over 2,000 years ago when Christ died on that cross and then he resurrected. The promise was released. It's on its way. Just prevail. Stand your ground. And it's only a matter of time before it drops out of the supernatural into the natural. Turn to somebody and say, it's only a matter of time. Well, how long? Never mind. You just prevail in faith. You prevail for your children. You prevail for your marriage. I prevailed for my marriage. And I prevailed super hard because I was the one that messed it up. Although she got a little crazy and filed for divorce. That was crazy. I mean, come on. Would you like to leave this? <laughs> Evidently she did, yeah. And I prevailed. I travailed and I prevailed. I prevailed. I prevailed, and when she still didn't want to come home, I said, God, you said, God, you said. And when she still said, no, it's not time yet. I said, God, you said, God, you said. I didn't give up. Yes, it hurt. Yes, I cried. But I never stopped my prevailing prayer. I was in the face of God all the time. You said, you said, you said. You said, you said, you said, you said, you said. But, but you can't say that to God until you know what he says about your situation. But you won't know what he says about your situation until you come to church, get in your word, and go to a Bible study. Because that's where they teach you. 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 Here's where you learn. Church. Church is a classroom. Church is a classroom. Church is a classroom. Here's where you learn. 
I don't want to go to church today. What are you saying? I don't want to learn anything about God today. I'm too tired. It's been a long day. It's been a rough day. I don't want to go to that classroom and learn anything about God today. God knows my heart, yeah, and he's not very happy. Thank you for letting uh, uh, young adults hear this message. Huh? Oh my God, I'm running out of time. You must be prepared to stand and believe. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground in the day of evil and having done all to stand firmly in your place. When you've done all, you do what? Stand. And how do you stand? Firmly. You don't stand like this. Oh, I'm standing. Although you may feel like that, but oh, I'm standing. <laughs> no, I'm standing. I'm not being moved. Yes, it hurts. And yes, it bothers me. And I may not understand everything about the whole situation, but I understand the Word of God. I know the Word of God because I'm in my Word. I go to church. I'm in a Bible study. I should have titled this message. Get a, go to church, get in your Word, go to Bible study. That should have been a good title. What a good way to end the series. Go to church, get in your Word, and get a Bible study to teach you how to pray. Verse 14. Stand therefore, which means what? Stand therefore means what? Come on, it means what? It means what? Get up, get up, quick, 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 get up, get up. I want you to go to two people, grab one of their shoulders, and I mean grab it and say, hey, hold your ground. stand say stand. stand to stand is to take up your position and be ready to fight off any and all resistance of the enemy that comes to push you out of position to believe is to be fully persuaded that you have the victory and you are not going to look at the circumstances no matter how depressing and desperate they are hear me when I say this you must realize, hear me, look at me, this is critical, this is critical. You must realize that everything we strive to bring to pass that glorifies God is going to be resisted. Going to church glorifies God. It's going to be resisted. Getting in your word glorifies God, but the enemy's going to resist it. Going to a Bible study glorifies God. The devil is going to resist it. Praying every single day glorifies God, but the devil is going to resist it. Don't give in to the resistance. Don't give in to the resistance. Resist the devil and he will flee. In that scripture, the word resist comes from a word that we know very well, that it is antihistamine. And what do you use an antihistamine for? What, what, babe, you're the doctor. What do you use it for? Allergies, to fight it off, to fight something off, to fight something off. Antihistamine, fight it off. Antihistamine, fight it off. Resist the devil and he will flee. Resist, 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 resist. Prevail in prayer. Resist, prevail, resist, prevail, resist. Stand your ground. Stand your ground firmly. Don't give in. Don't quit. Don't stop. Resist the devil and he will flee. Some people can only resist for a day. Why? Because they're not in the work church or in the Bible study. Some <laughs> So you don't know how to resist. Some people can't resist for a week. Listen, remember when that anti-drug uh, slogan came out, just say no? Was that stupid or what? How many of you said no but still did it besides me? Oh, ain't nobody going to say nothing. I see, how, I see how you roll now. Okay, all right. 
I forgot you were, forgot how religious you were. Only me and Janine. And she didn't raise her hand, she just went. And then when you turn to look at her, she goes, oh, oh, my neck hurts. How many of you said no, but did it anyway? Oh, the spirit of lying has just left this house. I remember, man, hey, man, here. No, no, thanks. Oh, come on, man, no. Come on, all right, well, it won't hurt. I know you didn't do that, but I, I did. Well, what's this? Never mind. What, you writing a book? If you don't know what is, it's because you don't go to church. <laughs> you don't <worry> in the Bible. <laughs> no. I take it back. My time's up. Give the Lord a praise. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Guess what? Part seven next week. I, I, I really meant to finish, but you guys just don't let me. Prevailing prayer. Don't stop. Don't quit. I was counseling with somebody that's very special to me yesterday. Concerned said situation has been gone for a while. I said, I said to the individual, there comes a time in your lives, in our lives, when we make choices. Either we let go or we prevail. And, and neither one is wrong if you understand the situation. But I'm not going to tell you because it's none of your business. But you don't want none of me today. I can pray, Lord, break their teeth. Brother Mario taught on that. I thought he was going to walk in and say, okay, Pastor, who, whose teeth are we breaking today? He does that, you know. I want you to close your eyes for me. Bow your heads. Please, nobody looking around. Nobody. And in your spirit, I want you to repeat this to yourself. Say, Lord, what is it? You were trying to tell me tonight. Not my neighbor, not, not who's sitting next to me. Or what is it you've been you've been saying to me? What point is it that you're trying to get across to me? you're saying to me Lord I, I really want to do it I want to be all you called me to be I want to do everything you've called me to do and so right now Lord I, I thank you for the way that you've spoken to me tonight nobody needed to prophesy to me the preacher really didn't even have to preach. All that was needed was for me to hear you. Thank you that you love me enough to speak to me, to even think of me and instruct me in this way. I thank you that it is important to you that I be victorious and stay victorious. I know and I thank you that it is important to you and your son Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I thank you that it's important to all three of you that I stay victorious. 
and then my children are victorious and then my children's children are victorious I thank you for this in Jesus name we pray amen can you give the Lord a praise offering come on can, can, can we give God a praise offering hallelujah